Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milenia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alfredi and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Ba. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, Rumbuka unaware of attempts to select deputy leader. Police find what could possibly be drug-related equipment in outer islands. And Fiji First Leader confirms finalised proposed candidates. From the studios of FBC Subar, Jackie Spate. Attempts by Social Democratic Liberal Party members to appoint a proposed party leader have gone unnoticed by Sitiveni Rumbuka. Speaking to FBC News, Rumbuka clarified that a proposed party leader can only be elected by the party management board. Ali Kimbia with the story. When questioned by FBC News to clarify the report in today's Fiji Sun, which stated that Ratunenga Malalambalavu's name was proposed to replace Rambuka if he lost his court case, the party leader says he is not aware of the meeting. It has not come to headquarters. Eh? They may have uh, raised it in, in, uh, in their own uh, branch meeting. They have not uh, brought that um, information up to Headquarters. Rambuka says they've amended their constitution to allow for a deputy leader to be appointed. Uh, I think it would uh, be best for them to approach uh, the Honorable Ratunengama and uh, and then after that clarification and uh, approval, then they take it forward to the management board. Rambuka says the party's different branches can submit names to the board and the final decision whether an appointment should be made lies within the board. It, that's normal. Uh, they can uh, bring up names and then clear those names with the, uh, their nominees. And uh, that, that's procedural. With Rambuka's court case still hanging in the balance, FBC News understands the party will soon select someone as the deputy leader, Ali Kimbia. FBC News. In a new twist to the recent spate of illicit drugs discovered in the outer islands, the police force have revealed that some equipment has also been found. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venengilio has confirmed investigations are underway. Akusita Thale with more. To date, more than 100 brown packages with the same label showing a buffalo containing cocaine were discovered washed ashore in various outlying islands in Taveuni, Yasawa and the most in the Lao group. We've been able to pick up a few equipment that we think uh, the, the drugs were, were stored in and before it uh, drifted to, uh, to the islands that we are picking uh, them up from. We have those equipment. It's part of ongoing investigations. We're working with our Australian counterparts uh, in identifying this. We've done a few sets. Brigadier General Sitiveni Ngiliho says so far no one has been charged and they are concerned with the number of similar packages that could be floating in outer islands, including those that are uninhabited. That is worrying for us because it extends uh, the, the search area to a bigger area. That's why we are working with Australian counterpart with the Fiji Navy in identifying uh, uh, tide patterns uh, and all that so we can zero in on areas that we need to target. We need uh, all, all the people of Fiji uh, to, to come up with information. Without information we can't do much and uh, we rely on information from individuals, uh, from the islands. Uh, if there are uh, yachts coming in without being cleared, they have to report to us. As of August 30th, 10 more similar packages were discovered and police have confirmed they are currently conducting tests on similar packages discovered in Yasawa earlier this week. The public are requested to call on the toll-free number 3318-529 if they have any information or may have made similar discoveries of cocaine or know if anyone is selling the illicit substances. Akusita Tali, FBC News. The Fiji First Party has finalized its 51 proposed candidates to contest in the upcoming general election. This was revealed to FBC News by party leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama, who is currently overseas. Mbaini Marama says he will release the names next Wednesday upon his return from the Global Climate Action Summit in San Francisco, USA. FBC News understands the 51 proposed candidates have been screened and have met the party's requirements. 
More than 55,000 Fijians are expected to benefit from the new bus fare initiative that comes into effect from the 1st of October. Under the program, around 50,000 pensioners will be able to travel free in addition to more than 4,000 Fijians with disabilities. The new bus fare initiative will ensure that pensioners will now join Fijians with disabilities in being able to travel absolutely free of charge for the first time, capped to a particular dollar amount. On the first day of every month, the program's beneficiaries will see their e-transport cards automatically topped up with the preset balance. The new bus fare initiative was announced in the 2018-2019 national budget. Still to come, man faces eight years in jail for robbery and 1,500 women to embark on a rocket project. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagrong and Bulefe, Nabondo and Nasir. Oya was it says, Lombasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bulefe, Nabado and Sir. We have a Timeli, a Kona Tauno Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bulefe, Nabando and Nasir. A 23-year-old man who robbed an accountant of Navo a year ago has been sentenced to eight years imprisonment by the Suva High Court. Chosun Dombui had pleaded guilty to one count of aggravated robbery and one count of theft. The court heard that on the 15th of September last year, Dombui and his accomplices entered the complainant's home and stole assorted items valued at more than $60,000. While sentencing Dombui, the High Court judge said he entered an early guilty plea and it saved the court's time. Dombui has been sentenced to eight years imprisonment with a non-parole period of seven years. His two other accomplices have pleaded not guilty to the charges. Despite reducing withdrawal applications for its members recently, the Fiji National Provident Fund has noticed that many Fijians still have less in their preserved account. General Manager Member Services Alipate Wangai Rawai says there is a need to raise more awareness on the importance of saving, investing and planning for retirement. Savaritambo reports. BFNPF is advising their members that when prior planning is done, things will be easier in the future. Those of you that are in the workforce out there, consider additional contributions. Don't underestimate the 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars when you additionally contribute. Because each of you, those that are working, you can additionally contribute. While Ratue Tuate Mataitine of Lomanikoro in Rewa is a re-entrant member with the fund, he turned 55 last year, and prior to that, he was thinking of fully withdrawing his FNPF. One, that I'm receiving a pension of $700 a month. And besides, I have a farming business as I speak. In April, about 3,000 members of the public visited the expo in Suva, and an estimated $2.2 million was reportedly invested into retirement savings and business schemes. FBC News. The supervisors who are out in the fields looking after different social programs have undergone training to enhance their skills. The training also includes developing a new social work program that is suitable for the region. Ritika Pratap reports. These supervisors are mostly out in the field, guiding university students on how best they can carry out their social work program. In the past, our students have been out in the field uh, we weren't really sure how they were being supervised. Uh, I've just joined the program this year. Uh, one of the things that we try to do is to really see what the students are learning when they're out in the field. The training was conducted in partnership between USP, the Social Welfare Department, and Messi University of New Zealand. The training also provided a platform to identify ethical ways to practice social work. I think uh, it's important because uh, uh, we can help uh, in the uh, development of our stuff, in upskilling them and the capacity building of our stuff. It's important because at the end, if you do not have healthy and good practitioners in social work and community work and counselling, they can't do good work. And it also helps them explore how they can work better with our families and our communities. USP currently has around 200 students at its Laudala campus 
and in the region studying social work program. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. 1,500 women in the rural areas will soon embark on a project to alleviate poverty and the loss of mangroves and forests for fuel wood. These women will be part of the Rocket Stove Project, which has been funded by India, Brazil and South Africa. Pranita Prakash reports. As part of the Rocket Stove Project, the women in rural areas will be trained to construct rocket stoves and generate income. These stoves use less fuel wood increase efficiency through shorter cooking time and reduce or totally eliminate smoke from open fire cooking which reduces uh, emissions into the atmosphere. Uh, we had a test at the University of the South Pacific uh, for this stove uh, back in 2013 where, where the efficiency of the stove was uh, seven times higher than uh, open fire cooking normal traditional cooking that we use in uh, villages. The stove is also expected to reduce expenses for families living in rural areas. The family uses roughly $10 a day, on $10 a week eh, on kerosene expense. So they will save $520 a year on kerosene expense and, uh, and also on cooking gas just for using this, this type of stoves. This project will also include setting up of wood lots in rural communities for sustainable cultivation of fuel wood resources and also the construction of storage facility. Ranita Prakash, FBC News. The National Fire Authority is moving ahead in line with the government's development plans in taking essential services closer to communities. Local Government Minister Parvin Kumar says with the growing population, NFA will build more of its stations in populated communities. Kritika Kumar reports. Local Government Minister Parvin Kumar says NFA's responsibilities continues to grow. They have taken on a broader emergency management role, which includes responding to emergency incidents. Kumar says NFA is developing strategies to further reduce their response time. Two new fire stations are due to be commissioned over the next few couple of months. One is in Rati Rati and the other one is in Nambaul. Meanwhile, the NFA chief executive says they continue to strive and improve service delivery for Fijians. It's really just building our capacity and uh, extending our footprint so that we are readily available and accessible uh, in terms of the services that uh, NFA provides. Meanwhile, NFA has been tasked by government to expand their services to developing centres such as Navua, Korovo, Natandola, Nambualu, Vunindawa and Nayavu. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. In sports later with Jamie, bodybuilders vying for a spot in the South Pacific Championship. But up next is Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Vodafone Fiji announces major investment. And in growing Fiji, a major upgrade on Drakiti Feeder Road in the Northern Division. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coraco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigra, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, Vodafone Fiji has announced a major investment of $207 million in its network upgrading. The upgrading, which will take at least 18 months to complete, will ensure that certain black spots around the country are connected to the Vodafone grid. Philip Anacaso has more. Vodafone Fiji is confident that its massive network investment will increase its high-speed 4G network coverage to more than 90% of the population. What it means is customers would be able to enjoy very high speed internet. The smartphone penetration in Fiji is over 70%. So we expect it to reach 80% very soon. 
One of the reasons behind the major investment is to improve the quality of internet services as they often receive complaints from customers in this area. So we also identify areas, for example, whether it's in the loud group or whether it's in the loud group, even in places in Lanta Siri or interior parts where there's no reception. We also will use those funds to complement the investment that uh, Vodafone is doing and of course any other company that's going to invest. Vodafone Fiji currently is the provider of internet to over 780,000 Fijians and has over 1 million active connections on the network as their customers have multiple data and voice connections. Philip and I Kaso, FBC News. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. U.S. inflation data released today was weaker than expected, further burdening the greenback. However, prospects for U.S.-China trade talks on the horizon and action by Turkey to support its currency all made for a largely positive tone in the markets. The European Central Bank kept its monetary policy unchanged as expected, and ECB President Mario Draghi expressed confidence on wage growth and the outlook for inflation. With the Aussie falling, investors who have had exposure in the U.S. markets are getting comfort in switching their holdings back into Australian dollars. Meanwhile, manufacturing activity in New Zealand grew in August, ending a three-month string of declines. That's all from HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Thanks, Anifa. Taking a look at the foreign exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. The back and forth trade dispute between China and the US saw the Fiji dollar on the rise against the American dollar and the Japanese yen, but it slipped slightly against the other currencies we cover. As for the commodities market, the price of oil slipped slightly to close just. Uh, $70 a barrel. Gold was down to close at 1203 per ounce and silver closed at 1431 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, a major road upgrade is being carried out by the Fiji Roads Authority on the Driketi Feeder Road in Vanualevu. This is part of the periodic road maintenance program to be provide rather to provide access in the central, eastern, and northern divisions. Located off the Lambasa Nambawalu Road, Driketi Feeder Road is almost midway between Lambasa and Savasavu. The road serves the government stations, two schools, 14 villages, and seven settlements and a shopping center. The road has stabilized impact and will be resealed. And that's a wrap from the business desk for this week. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, first phase of Marist Grounds completed. And Eastern Division wins Police IDC. Details coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singa Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jack's Nursery. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nursery. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. The first phase of an $8 million sports ground project at Morris Brothers High School has been completed. The work, which includes a running track and jumping pit, was officially opened today by the government of Guangdong Province in China, who funded the project. Mili Tavanga with the details. While opening the new upgraded grounds at Flagstaff, Sports Minister Lai Senior Tui Tumbo says it's a great achievement for Morris Brothers High School. A 100 meters running track and a 15 meters jumping pit. Many thanks uh, to the Guangzhou Construction Group Company, uh, Fiji Private uh, Limited, who involved in, um, in the upgrading uh, works on the sign and rain and working uh, long hours to fully complete this $8 million project. MBHS principal Timayi Masiu says the newly opened facilities will help their athletes prepare for future competition. For all the runners, because this provides them with uh, a proper running area, running tracks, uh, for them to um, 
up to their ability and do better in the future. School head boy Christopher Nimimbi says there's now no room for excuses when it comes to training. We were in the rugby because of our field, but now we don't have the excuse. It's a, it's a huge gift, you know, we're all so thankful. I mean, just look at all the boys, we're all so happy for it. Yeah, we're going to benefit a lot. The grounds will be officially in use from next January. Melita Wanga, FBC Sports. Fiji-born Waikato rugby star Sevu Ri scored a try in his side's 42-22 win over Hawke's Bay in the New Zealand Provincial Mighty 10 Cup match last night. Waikato led 21-15 at the halftime mark. Organizers of the 2018 Suva Classics bodybuilding event expect a good turnout this year with the Suva Classics to serve as selection ground for the South Pacific Bodybuilding Federation Championships next month. Fiji Bodybuilding expects everyone to show up with guns blazing. Stella Toy with more. 25-year-old Solomon Islander Fenton Mania is the defending champion in this year's Suva Classics. While he prepares for the championship, he knows there will be people eyeing his title. Like it's an art, eh? you go to the gym, you carve your body, and when you go to stage, it's like you are showing the, the carving, that you are displaying it. Yeah. So um, I feel confident that, uh, that it will be uh, a good, uh, good uh, competition, and also it will be a challenging. With only two weeks until the Suva Classics, Fiji Bodybuilding Fitness Federation treasurer Ronald Richey says they are receiving interest from a good number of athletes. So everybody is interested for the South Pacific bodybuilding. So they they coming is uh, you no know, coming to get a spot for the Fiji team. So we have only two athletes who don't need qualification, which is uh, uh, Jack and uh, Inok Lingeri. Yeah? The Silver Classics will be held on the 29th of this month at the Grand Pacific Hotel, while the South Pacific Championships will be held from the 26th to the 28th of October. Stella Taoi, FBC Sports. The Fiji football under-16 team lost 3-0 to Tahiti yesterday in its second match of the OFC Championships. The side now requires a draw at the least against New Caledonia to qualify for the semi-final. Mandatory drug, drug tests were conducted for all players participating in the Kontiki Finance Fiji Police, police rather, Inter-District Tournament, which concluded today. This was a directive from the police commissioner, Sitive Ningiliho, to ensure that the eight police teams that were competing in the three-day tournament played a fair and clean game. Meanwhile, in the final this afternoon, Eastern Division defeated Western 1, four goals to two on penalty kicks. We want to set example from our own organization. We do not want our officers to be involved in drug, so it was our commissioner's directive that we have our officers tested because we have seen that most of these players, uh, they take drugs and play, so we wanted a clean sport. That was the main reason. In today's Play of the Day, Belgium star Eden Hazard continues his amazing form from the FIFA World Cup with an incredible left-footed goal in their 4-0 win over Scotland. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media. A look at the three new iPhones. That's coming up. Radio Fiji One, non domo eviti. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello to you and to the wonderful weekend. Yes, it's a cool Friday and it wasn't as rainy as the other days. Well, the weather is calm for now, but you still might have to hold your outdoor plans as there is more showers indicated. Taking a quick look over to the west, it was cool and breezy. Eastwards from Back Harbour to Suva, quite clear and mild light showers are indicated for tonight. Cold night again. And up north, cloudy skies will get rain. At sea, southeast winds 25 to 30 knots, very rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 9.26 p.m.
p.m. with high tide at 3.43 a.m. Sunrise at 6.03. For tomorrow, showers is the topic for now and I guess it will stick around over the weekend. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest at 25 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, patchy showers once again, so stay warm and sip on that warm tea while rain does its thing. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, can the Fijian draw maintain its unbeaten run in the National Rugby Championship? It all depends on the end of the day. Like, uh, no matter how much you give, it's always 100%. You'll always uh, like win. Like you, as you said, when like you give your best, that's how you'll win. So my opinion, they'll win. Rugby is in Fijian blood, and they will win. The winning streak is there. Yes, because they are very good kids. Yeah. They are good uh, playing with the rugby. Yeah, they can maintain. The rugby is their um, rugby is in their veins. They are too good. They can play rugby. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Rumbuka unaware of attempts to select deputy leader. Police find possibly drug-related equipment in outer islands, and Fiji First Leader confirms finalized proposed candidates. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, this week we're asking, are we doing enough to conserve water during this prolonged dry spell? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day is the Vunambaka Bay Resort at Malolo, sent in by Silo Singali. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. My name is Nan, I'm from Lumbua, like Prenny North, it's known as well as Radio Fiji 2, it's known as well as Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country. I'm from Sima Nakasi, I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2, it's known as Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country. I'm Uncle King, I'm a taxi driver, it's known as Rugby Famous, it's known as Radio Fiji 2 Famous. Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country.